Every year the garden is a little bit different and this year I've made some changes in how I've been growing my tomatoes and honestly I have to say my tomatoes have never looked better this early in the season. So let's go over what I've changed when it comes to growing tomatoes and what I've kept the same and why it's working for me and maybe some of these things might apply to your tomato garden as well. Every year I tell myself the same thing. I'm going to be growing less tomatoes, that's a lie I already knew, and two, I'm going to give them more space between each plant. This year I actually did it, and it's a really good thing I did, because the more airflow, the more space a tomato plant has, the more access to nutrients and sort of lack of disease that it will get. And now in terms of actual plant to plant spacing, each tomato plant is 24 inches apart. Usually I try to keep it at 18, because I'm greedy and I want to try to fit an extra tomato plant in a row, but this year I was like, no. I'm giving them the amount of space that they actually want, which is about two feet for indeterminate tomatoes. You could go even up to three feet, but I am still a little bit greedy. The benefits of going farther apart is that you get way more airflow, the tomatoes don't have to compete for the same water nutrients as much, and they just grow much better. The other thing I really made sure to do this year is I didn't want to plant a very dense block of tomatoes. I have one example of that, but that is determinate tomatoes that will show pretty soon after this. But what I'm talking about is the actual main tomatoes. I have this about five feet apart from row to row. That's, again, giving them way more airflow, less competition between each other. What I did last year is I planted a very dense block of tomatoes over here in the corn patch. They ended up getting a lot of disease and they didn't produce as much as I would have liked. So now they have more sun, more airflow, less competition, and they just look fantastic for it. So that's tip number one. The thing that I really changed this year is something that I've always wanted to change, and that is giving my tomatoes more space. Something that I haven't changed over the years is how I like to support my tomatoes, and that is my preferred method of the Florida Weave trellis system. All it takes is a couple tea posts and a spool of twine, and you got yourself a very robust tomato trellis that can support many large plants over the whole season. So it's definitely a favorite of mine for the variety of reasons I just mentioned, but also it's easy to just maintain and continuously tie up tomatoes. You could support more branches, which means that you get a bigger overall yield in the long run. And of course, it's easy to set up these long rows with distance to provide all the airflow that I could possibly ever want. So the Florida Weave Trellis is definitely still my go-to favorite, but as you see throughout this video, I have a couple other setups that I use as well. So let's move on to the next thing that I've definitely changed from last year. One thing that I did not do this year is actually fertilize my tomatoes. This might sound shocking to many of you, but basically I did a soil test earlier in the spring and I found that my entire garden is totally fine in phosphorus and potassium, or P and K. Those are the major nutrients that are usually required for things like tomatoes because they support fruiting and rooting, which is what tomatoes really want to do for their entire lifespan. So fertilize if you know that you need it, but don't fertilize if you aren't sure because you might be causing a bigger problem rather than solving one. I just really quickly wanted to show you my determinate tomato bed. This is the style bed where I planted everything a little bit too close together because I got greedy knowing that they were determinate tomatoes. And what you're seeing is a little bit more disease pressure. I have some leaves dying off. I actually have a decent amount of aphids on here but I'm not too worried about it because I also have a lot of ladybugs that I've just moved in and I've started to take care of my aphid problem for me. Now, the thing I'll mention here is that if you do plant very densely together, like these determinants are, you wanna make sure you're providing more fertility and water. So in this case, I probably should have been giving them some liquid fertility just because there's so much competition. There's no space in between rows and they're only about 16 inches apart. I did this on purpose because they're determinant and they only grow for about three months before they're harvested. So I figured, not a big deal, and honestly, it's really not a big deal. It just doesn't look as good. Something that it will never change in my garden is how densely I plant things, and specifically how I interplant or companion plant all my different fruits and vegetables. So the tomatoes here have these marigolds planted in between every single one, and the idea behind it is that the marigold is a flower, so it attracts pollinators. It has a very specific aroma that apparently deters some pests, and also the roots are beneficial to fight against things like root, not nematode. Now, French marigolds specifically are the best ones for that specific task. So keep that in mind if that's your goal. The other thing you'll see in this particular patch right here is I have some zinnias, which just grow well in the same conditions that tomatoes do, and again are a flower, so they should help increase the pollination activity. And the other weird one isn't really companion planting, but just a bed mix, which is that I have my tomatoes planted up here, which will provide shade for the peppers down here. It'll stop them from getting sun scald. And also, since these are in the same family, 
I will now treat this bed as a bed that's been growing solanaceous things. So things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and potatoes. So the idea behind this is that when I do a crop rotation, which is actually the next tip, something new to me, is that this whole family of plants is now in this bed. So whatever I plant here next should not be part of this family. Now let's pop back over to that raised bed where I'll show you another style of companion planting that will actually give you more food overall. In terms of companion planting to get more food, my favorite thing to do is actually grow herbs in between your tomatoes. So right here I have a Genovese style basil, which of course is a perfect companion for tomatoes when you're eating them together. Now the other herb that I have right here is a nice summer savory, which is again wonderful with tomatoes. And on this side I have my nice tetra dill. So all of these herbs are edible and go well with tomatoes, which of course is a wonderful thing to put together. It makes harvesting much easier. The last thing I'll mention is that I have been using the shade that these tomatoes provide to grow little gem lettuces. So all of this right here is little gem lettuce that is now protected by the tomatoes from intense sun, allowing them to grow very nice and healthy and making the most use out of this raised bed. Something else I'm doing differently this year is actually succession planting tomatoes. In San Diego, we have such a mild climate where the winter doesn't really show up until maybe January for a little bit. So the idea behind this is that I should be growing tomatoes all throughout the season. What I'm doing here is I bought a six pack of determinate tomatoes and I'm going to be planting them out in this bed. The bed that I just showed you earlier with the terminates is now starting to produce tomatoes. So soon that's going to be out of the way and I want another succession of tomatoes so I could can up a bunch of sauce later in the season. This also works for areas that are even warmer than San Diego where things like disease and heat stress are an issue. You could just keep growing more backup indeterminate tomatoes even to replace the tomatoes that get the most disease stricken throughout the season. And that way you'll still have something throughout the whole year. So succession planting tomatoes is something I don't hear about very often, but for warm climate, definitely give it a shot, especially with determinate tomatoes. Prior to this year, I honestly was one of those gardeners that just didn't believe in crop rotations. I thought it was something that you only really had to do is a large farm. Well, it turns out that's not true. I grew my same tomatoes in this big bed here for two years in a row. And this past year, what I found was those root knot nematodes that I mentioned earlier. This is what it looks like here. It makes the roots look very chunky and big and they just swell up and stop the flow of water up into the plant leading to less yield and honestly very unhealthy tomatoes by the end of the season. So this year I did practice crop rotation. As I mentioned earlier, I showed you the tomatoes with the peppers and this bed over here has never grown tomatoes before, which is why the tomatoes are planted in it now. Now next year I could return to this bed and plant tomatoes again, or I could keep looking and maybe do a two to three year rotation. So crop rotation can be required especially once you find a problem that keeps attacking your tomatoes year after year. Something that will never change in my garden are these big pollinator patches. Right now it's absolutely buzzing with bees, it's full of beneficial insects, and it's bringing in those wasps that help parasitize and attack any hornworms that might find my tomatoes. The other thing it does, of course, is all these pollinators ensures that I have very good pollination overall, and I get those long, perfect trusses of well-pollinated tomato plants. Now, one thing that I did change this year is when I started my tomatoes. Usually, I try to start them as early as I can, sometime around January, but this year, life got in the way. I started them later in February, and it was so much better because instead of having to keep potting up these tomatoes to try to keep them healthy and happy, I ended up just having to pot them up on a pretty standard schedule without having to fuss too much about fertilizing. And I ended up planting them in the ground around the same time. And they were just so much happier because they didn't have to live in a container for three to four months. They only had to sit in there for two to three. So definitely this year and every year following, I will be planting my tomatoes later. Well, not planting them later, but starting them later. So pay attention to your climate, see if anything's changed overall, and try to get that timing of tomatoes in the sweet spot because if you start too early, you end up with more palms by the time you plant. If you start too late, you might miss your season. So that timing is really key and paying attention to your own garden is the best way to know when that time is. As a gardener, it is really easy to be tempted by all the new varieties of plants that come out every year. Tomatoes are no exception and every year I try to grow maybe too many new varieties and this year I've slowed that down. Instead of growing a whole bunch of new varieties, I'm growing maybe two to three new ones and growing more of the ones that I know that I absolutely love. For example, last year I only grew one each of the Sun Gold and Cherokee Purple, which was a huge mistake because they are our favorite tomatoes by far. So now I have two to three of each of those and I'll have plenty of that harvest that I truly look forward to eating every year instead of a bunch of new ones that I maybe will or won't like. So always remember in the garden that 
You want to grow something that you want to enjoy eating and something that you truly love and look forward to every year. And tomatoes, of course, are no exception. So this year, I've just pared down my overall varieties and grown more of what I love. Hopefully, all these tips and things that I've changed over the year and some of the things that I've reinforced and learned were helpful to you and you guys will have a more successful tomato garden from it. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content about tomatoes and gardening in general.